Are you doing a lot of printing in your game and it's slowing down the performance? Stay tuned to find out a solution. All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our own logger, logger class, our own logger object. Now, you can use this to extend or extend any object when it comes to writing it, writing the script, but we're going to be extending the reference. That way, one, it, man it can manage itself in memory, and two, we really don't need any of the, anything that comes with a node. All right. so. Why are we doing this? Well, the benefit of doing this is we're gonna have we're gonna have cleaner and more professional looking uh, logs that both get printed out into our console, and that somebody who might have an issue can easily submit to our forums or uh, something we can easily track to help narrow down maybe a bug or something that a user may have. Another reason that we're going to be doing this is we're also going to have different different logging levels like you would have in more of a professional environment but not only that we're also gonna have it so that our we can have a debugging log uh we're gonna have a debug level and with that this uh this information will only show up inside of our debug here and once we actually create an export none of those are going to uh none of those incidents or events are going to be logged so we can purely use the debug log for uh, tracking any issues or anything that we want uh, in our own situation here without having to go back into our script and delete all of these uh, maybe pointless or testing uh, printouts. And to fix our, or to help on performance <clears throat> for games that are doing a lot of printing and to the point where it's starting to affect their performance. Uh, we're going to have this automatically happen on a separate thread so that we don't have to worry about it interfering with our main with our main thread that the game is running on. All right. So, to do this, we can go ahead and jump in creating ourselves a script. Doesn't really matter where it is in our project, so just create a new script. Language, of course, we're going to use GD script here. Uh, it doesn't have to inherit from anything. We don't need any template, although if we want, you can do no comments or empty. Uh, in this case, we're going to have all, we're going to have custom functions, so we're going to get rid of everything anyway. So I'm just going to go with empty, save us uh, a second. And for the script name, I'm just going to call it our logger. Logger, logger class .gd. Go ahead and create that and open that up. All right, so here we go. Here we are inside of our logger class. And as I mentioned before, we're not going to extend anything like a node or any of that because we don't need any of these fancy, any of the fancy benefits of uh, having an actual object a node. We're going to extend a resource and benefit of this again is it's also going to manage itself in memory. And since we don't need any benefit of a physical node, there's no reason for not to. You can always leave it as a node or control or whatever you want. It really doesn't matter in this case. So if you don't want to use, oh, I'm sorry, not resource that she's there. Typed up the uh, wrong situation here. Uh, a reference. There we go. That's what we wanted to do. So my mistake, uh, but there you go. It's going to manage itself. If you don't want to use that, you want to use uh, node control or anything else that you want to extend off of. Perfectly fine. You can certainly do that. All right. So the first thing we need to do when creating a new class is we need to give that class a name. So class name. And this is just going to be our logger. Here we go. I don't know why it was uh, triggering. The old one was 30. Uh, all right, we have that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, for testing. Uh, testing in a bit to show you how it works. All right, so with our class name, we're going to need a a variable. 
And the variable that we're going to be using here is actually going to be an enum and it's going to track our levels. Now to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste uh, what I already wrote there. And this enum, the levels that we're going to have is debug, info, warn, error, and fatal. Now, as you see here, we got some comments here that are going to that pretty much tell you exactly what each level is intended for. Uh, debug is for when, like I said, we're doing diagnostics, looking for information, and these are not going to print, or these levels are not going to be logged in our final product. Uh, info is just when you want to print out some normal information for some standard behavior that's happening inside of uh, your game or your application, things that are expected to happen, just so you can keep track of what's going on as things are happening. A warn level or warning uh, is when something unexpected happens. An error is the level that we're going to use. Error is the level we're going to use when uh, there's, a, there's a problem, such as uh, if we can't access or gain access to something, say a file, uh, like a save, for example, or uh, maybe configuration files, so anything that yeah, that's basically going to be a problem for our project. It doesn't necessarily have to be accessing a file, but that's going to be our main our main error throughout there. And then fatal. Well, fatal is when we're gonna when we have a serious problem or something is corrupted and prevented from happening. Uh, AKA this is when something that needs to happen doesn't happen for whatever reason, whatever. And that a fatal error is normally, normally, uh, followed up by the application closing itself. So if you've ever had done something in a software or played a game and you had an error pop up and then the whole thing just crashed on you, that would be our fatal level. All right, so with this, we're going to have just two functions. One function we're going to call, which is going to handle our thread situation. And then the net, the second function is going to be the one that gets called on that thread. Let's go ahead. We'll create a func and about log. That's with two Gs, because if you have one G, that keyword is already taken by the engine. So we're doing log two Gs. And we're going to have a message in the form of a string as an argument, as well as a flag as an int, which is also going to have a default of zero, which will be our debug level. So you don't have to put a level in here. When calling this function, but if you don't, it's only going to be on the debug level. Right, so what are we going to do in here? Well, we're going to create a new thread. So we're going to say var t equals thread dot new. And then we're going to start the thread. And start is going to take a few arguments. For example, we're going to have self as our first dot one. Uh, as you can see, it's instance. The method name as a string, the data that gets passed in, and then the priority level. <clears throat> so with this, we're gonna we call self method as a string. I'm gonna call it underscore log underscore it. The argument that we're passing in, we're passing in uh, more than one piece of information, so it's gonna be an array, and it's gonna be message. And flag. And then we can just use our priority normal. If you want to use low or high, it's completely up to you. But I'm just going to use normal for this. And then once we start it, we simply wait for our thread to finish and allow everything to merge back into our main thread perfectly fine. So that should handle, hopefully, handle our performance. Issue if we're having if we're doing so much printing.
And now we actually need this function that we want to call. So let's go ahead and get our log it function in there. And of course, we're passing in a piece of information. So we're just going to call this data, and this is an array. Now we can't call this a uh, can't call it a string pool string. We can't call it a pool int because we have a string and an integer, so we have two different data types. And so we have to just go with a standard array type here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, we're going to need our date and time. And the reason for this is because this is going to be for professional looking when it comes to actually formatting um, the logs that come out of our project. So this is going to tell, this is going to allow our users to know what date this was happening. So maybe this stuff was happening before a patch that was released, uh, as well as the a timestamp when everything was happening. So with this, we can go ahead and get the time class, and we're going to get get date time, and we're just going to go ahead and get this from the system. All right. So remember, I, I said that if this was going to be on our debug level, that we're not going to print anything out to our console uh, after our project has been exported. So we can go ahead and. Uh, do this check so we check if data index one remember the second information here at index one the flag that we're passing in which is going to be our level so we're going to say if our uh, logging level is equal to levels dot debug so if this is on the debugging level and uh, project is not os dot is debug build. So if this is not the debug build, so if I go ahead and uh, pass this for a moment, and if we were to run uh, our project with the current scene, you'll see in the title window we have debug written in all caps and in parentheses. Uh, I know you can't see this uh, on the screen, but you can just run your project, any project, and you can see this on your own. Uh, but you see that is in debug, and that is what this check here is basically doing. So it's checking if this is labeled as uh, the debug. So if we're running this in the editor, then it will be true. So we're checking if it's not running in the editor, inside the editor. So we're, we're basically making sure that it is a standalone. So if it's not running in the editor, and it's on the debugging level. All we're going to do is just return. Simple as that. And that ends. Now, what about if it's not? Well, for a little uh, clarity and easier to find some information, what I'm going to do is we're also going to check if we have a, if we're logging something on the error or Beta level, and what we want to do there is I want to grab the message, and I'm just going to change it to upper set as it all uppercase for this. That way, it that way we can just see it. It'll stand out a little more, and then outside of both of these if statements, we have the final thing that we're actually going to do, and that is going to be creating our message and we're just going to use three placeholders here with uh, one vertical line in between so this would be like half of our pipes or a, a single pipe and we're going to format in this in this in the order of our date time and then our flag and then our actual message and all I'm going to do here is if you want this to show up in the output console here, of course, and we want it to be logged, you do message log. If you want it to only show up in the log, uh, you can try one of your other information. If you really want to print error, print error with bars, however you want to look at it. But 
And that's essentially all we have to do for our logger. And if we jump into an actual project here, see all we have to do, we're just going to create a variable. I'm just going to call on L. We create a new instance of our logger class. And you can see here, we just call dot log on our project. Pass in a vested string and set our logging level. And you see, we got debug error and fatal here. And if we were to run this, taking a look down inside of the output console there, you can see everything nicely formatted. We have all the information that we need. You see our logging levels all in the same place. And then we see our message at the end with our error and fatal messages uh, being capitalized for easy access to quickly glance at and know that, hey, something's wrong here inside of our, or something went wrong inside of our log here. All right, so there we go. That's all we have to do. And now we have a much cleaner log. We have our own little logging system put in here. Of course, if you have not uh, done this before, make sure that you come up into your project settings and you actually have uh, where is it? Search. There you go. Uh, make sure you come into the file logging here and you enable file, lo file logging. This is turned off default. And if you want to keep more than five files, you can change that by five default. But just make sure you have that on so you can actually have your uh, debugging logs. Alright, so there we go. Now we have some nicely and more professional looking logs. If you want to uh, go the extra step inside of our sort of logging class here. And if you want to narrow down the output a little more, instead of saying month, this, second, this, weekday, this, this, uh, minute, this, hour, this, this, day, this, for example. Uh, if you want to narrow those down into looking nicer, you can certainly do that. So we come on down and for example, we just take a look at string from system. And we were to rerun that same thing. We could already see that on its own. Something much nicer. So that's one way that you can quickly do that if you just want to uh, make it look a little nicer without necessarily uh, parsing out some of that data and making it look in a different way. <clears throat> so. That's something that you can do to clean up your logging class a little bit, but there you go. With it being a reference, it's going to manage itself in, inside of the memory. We're doing this all on a separate thread, so it shouldn't affect our main project. Our logs look a lot more professional looking, and we have all of our levels appropriately uh, displayed and named, as well as our debug level being that is going to be completely omitted when we export our project. All right, that'll do it for this video. Take care. See you guys in the next one. If you have any comments or uh, anything that you want to see or have help with, you can go ahead and leave a leave it in the comments.